F1 has a superstar on its hands. Actually, let's be honest, he already is one. Charles Leclerc, a brave, supremely talented and charismatic driver, who in turn is now Ferrari's golden boy, who was brought up through the Manufacturer's Driver Academy and has developed a great personality with the public, whether you're a fan of him or not. He was born in the principality that is Monaco, and even though the place has an area of just 2.1 km squared, it has a huge amount of racing history, obviously the Grand Prix, but also with drivers such as Leclerc, Olivier Breton who went on to have a distinguished career in sports car racing, and Louis Chiron, someone who demonstrated his driving talents in the 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s. He though was the only driver born in Monaco to have competed in the Indianapolis 500. He competed in the race in 1929. That though would change in 2015. May I introduce you to Stefano Coletti. Born in Monaco? I mean, that's hardly a surprise, is it? Stefano was a driver who showed from an early age great abilities behind the wheel, winning titles in karting in 2004, which would help propel him to car racing the following year with a German Formula BMW championship. After spending a few years in the Formula BMW and Formula Renault ranks, Coletti made the step up to the F3 Euro Series for 2008. However, it would be a tricky year for Stefano, after he was dropped by the Red Bull Driver Development Scheme midway through the year. 2009 initially indicated a turning point in his fortunes. That though wouldn't last too long as he was suspended and then excluded from the Norris Ring round, where he struck the late Jules Bianchi, after Coletti felt the Frenchman said bad words to him. He ultimately finished 10th in the championship. Up until 2011, Coletti competed in AutoGP, Formula Renault 3.5, GP3 and then even some GP2. He would though gain a good stronghold in GP2 from 2011. For the next four years, Stefano would show some decent speed, collecting eight wins and even being a real title contender for the 2013 championship, until Silverstone came along, where afterwards it was a complete car crash. All of this time though, Coletti had always had in the back of his mind that he wanted to race in America. Apparently in 2008 and 2010, he had opportunities to pursue a racing career in the States, only for the possibility of him to race in Formula 1 getting some injections of hope. With them not coming to fruition however, Stefano decided that he wanted to have a try at the IndyCar series and follow in the footsteps of the late great Louis Chiron. So after doing some testing, Coletti was named a driver for the KV Racing Technology team, partnering alongside Sebastian Bourdais. The announcement was made just 20 days before the first race of the season in St. Petersburg. Of the announcement, Stefano said, I couldn't have asked for better for my rookie year. I look forward to an exciting year with the team. Co-owner of the KV team, Jimmy Vassar, said, There will obviously be a learning curve, especially on ovals, but I think everyone feels that Stefano is up to the task. So how would he get on? St. Petersburg showed some promise, qualifying 17th, but was the fastest rookie. His race pace was really promising. He showed some aggression for sure, but moved his way towards the front, and with five laps to go was running in the eighth position. However, one lap later, the scoring monitor said that Coletti was in 21st, one lap down. I can only imagine this was for a late pit stop, but I can't find anywhere to say what the reason for the pit stop was, or indeed if it was a pit stop. New Orleans was next. Rain washed out qualifying, so started in 20th. Coletti, after going wide, then crashed by aeroplaning on a huge puddle which sent the Monegasque spearing into the Armco barrier, which ultimately led to him finishing up 17th, three laps down. In Long Beach, a crash in qualifying meant that Coletti was on the back row of the grid. He would end up going 11 laps down, for again a reason I can't seem to find anywhere, although he would end up collecting the fastest lap of the race. At Barber, Stefano would qualify in 16th and then finish the race in 19th, although that may have not been helped after he was involved in a bit of a coming together with James Jakes. Some real signs of potential though at the Indianapolis GP, which luckily for him came to fruition. Qualified in 10th, finished in 8th. Yes, it was perhaps the most suited to his European racing background, however, you've got to start somewhere. The Indianapolis 500, though, is where he would get the chance to break Louis Chiron's long reign as the only Monegasque to have raced in one of motorsport's biggest events. Bumping was on the cards, with 34 cars entered. Of course, only 33 can start the race. Coletti would make the field, inheriting 32nd place, 
after taking part in the last row shootout, where he managed a 4 lap average of 222.001 miles an hour. So he would take part in the greatest spectacle in racing. After other people were moved to the rear due to driver changes, Stefano would actually start in 29th. However, his maiden Indy 500 would not go the full 200 laps. He had nowhere to go other than plough into the huge accident that occurred for Sebastian Saavedra and Jack Hawksworth. He was classified in 25th place. Coletti seemed to bounce back strongly, qualifying an impressive 8th for the first of two duel in Detroit races. The first race, though, wouldn't go as well. He finished 15th in the significantly shortened race, whilst also getting involved in an accident which included Tony Kanaan and Graham Murray Hall. The second race would also prove to be a struggle for him. Texas was going to prove tricky given his lack of oval experience, and it did prove that way for Stefano. In qualifying, he was over half a second slower than the next slowest car of Pippa Mann, whilst in the race, he was the last of the finishers in 19th place, 9 laps down. Toronto was also a struggle, qualifying 20th and then crashing on lap 40. Coletti did show signs of improvement in Fontana. He's had a competitive time in qualifying and would collect a good finishing position in 12th, staying out of trouble. On his first short oval, Stefano did pretty well given his lack of experience, qualifying 19th and only DNFing from the race due to engine issues. After qualifying 13th in Iowa, he hit the inside wall on that 195. Unfortunately, in mid-Ohio, it was a weekend to forget, after getting into incidents with Takuma Sato and Rodolfo Gonzalez, although he was feeling under the weather that race. Coletti would retire early in the Pocono race due to braking issues, although obviously the round in Pocono was overshadowed by Justin Wilson's fatal accident. For the last race of the season in Sonoma, Stefano still struggled to show consistent speed, qualifying 20th and finishing in 17th. When you take all of those figures together and then put them into a championship results table, it didn't make for good reading. He ended the season in 19th position with 203 points. In fact, Stefano would be the driver who finished last out of all the drivers who competed in every round of 2015. The race at Sonoma would prove to be his last in IndyCar. It was a season that people would have expected some peaks and troughs. Unfortunately, the peaks probably weren't peaky enough, whilst the troughs were probably really troughy. I don't think that's a word, is it? In a review of his season, the late great Robin Miller was his brutally honest self, saying, among other things, the rookie from Monaco was the talk of spring training at Barber. But that faded into the where did he go conversation, a favourite of Delara because of all his accidents. Plus, Coletti seemed ill-prepared for his culture shock in the USA. So what has his career been since then? Well, it was a season in prototype endurance cars in 2016, he did one round of Formula 2 in 2017, a few rounds of International GT Open in 2020 in a Bentley, and finally two rounds of ETCR in 2021, from which he hasn't returned to the driver's seat since. Stefano said it was a dream come true to race in America and especially the Indy 500. I'd have been interested to see what Caletti would have achieved in his second year in the series, having gotten more climatised to the tracks, and particularly the ovals. That though is something we'll never get an answer to. However, that's going to be it for this video, thank you very much for watching. What are your opinions on Stefano? Say in the comment section down below. However, until the next video, enjoy the rest of your day.